Hello everybody, welcome back to In My Shed, I'm BC. Been absent for a couple of weeks now, but back on track making a few videos. And uh, this is where we left off last time. I had the engine crane up on it, and I just could not get a clean grab at it. Uh, like a donkey, I forgot about all the overhead joists for the mezzanine floor, I could have thrown up a block and tackle. And thinking back, I haven't used a block and tackle for about 20 years, so I had to have a bit of a cackle. But I decided to pull the path, make it a bit lighter for me to get off, a little bit easier to do. And also, give you a look at the parts. Uh, I was quite surprised the spindle hasn't turned for 25 years. Both the motor and the uh, spindle bearings, I think, will have to be replaced. They're freed up now with a bit of a, a wank with it. But, uh, yeah, I think it'll be a good power unit. We'll take this apart, take the mounting plate over to the Cincinnati and offer it up and see what it looks like. It's a bit jammed for space in there, but I think we'll get in reasonably well. Uh, prior to getting it to this stage, there was only a couple of socket and catch screws to take the belt guard off. Uh, I've got the dust extractor ready to come off down the bottom here. The motor's ready to lift off, which will just be a little job, and then I can put a couple of wedges into the spindle clamp and hopefully take the main spindle out. I was trying to lift this off in one piece, but after the first COVID jab, my left elbow has suffered some sort of cyst and I've got very, very little lifting power. And last time I was at this, I could see it getting more and more dangerous and me finishing up with a motor dropped on my foot or something like that. And I don't really appreciate that happening at my age. But yeah, let's get amongst it. See if we can slide the belt off the top. It's all just better hanging in there. Nice flat drive, cone pulleys. Everything about this is built really well. Which is what you'd expect out of a German made machine. There we go, that's a bit easier than I thought. Motor's off. We can't spin that up anymore because of these two bolts that limit the amount of tilt. We'll take the dust shoe off now. Some of it has been a little bit awkward. I don't think this issue was ever intended to be pulled apart. And you can understand that for the work it was doing. I can tell you for a minute while I find out what the spindle's like. Okay, I've got it all prepped. Uh, dust guard came off quite easy. I've undone the two clamping uh, socket head catch screws and put a wedge in and the spindles come free very, very easily. So I think it'll be quite an easy disassemble. And once the extra weight's off, I'll be able to lift this bracket off and take it over to the Cincinnati and see what we can offer up. Let's see if I can get the socket out making a mess of it. And it doesn't want to spin over far enough. Okay. It's catching on the frame there. No, she won't come out that way either. I'll have a little bit of a wrestle with it and get back to you in a few minutes. Well, after a little bit of bad language, we had a win. And I'm glad it wasn't on camera because I nearly had a fail. Still a bit heavier than I thought it would be, but I could not get the spindle out without removing the bracket. It just would not swing either way. I tried taking the wheel off to pass it through in the other direction, but the wheel hub nut has frozen up over 25 years. <laughs> I can't imagine why. Um, two bits of very, very good German engineering. The spindle will require new bearings. It does turn now, but it's a little bit notchy. And with something that spins fast, I'm not prepared to take any sort of a risk. The bracket is one great big lump of um, either SG iron or cast iron. 
very, very heavy. I might actually machine it down. It's going to be a, a little bit thick so getting up on top of the old Cincinnati. And I think I've got enough room to get the tripod in there and the camera and I'll show you where it'll be sitting. But overall, a little bit of success at last for today. Uh, I don't know whether I'll be using the spindle on this unit or on something separate. So if necessary, to make it easier to install on the Cincinnati, I can saw that piece off there and keep that as a matching unit with the spindle. I'm sure that that spindle will be well used in the future. Even the diamond wheel that's on it still looks quite good. And that'll leave me this bracket to attach to the Cincinnati. There's two big holes that the large bolts went through to allow a little bit of tilt in the head. And I think that they will line up quite well with the T-slot on the top of the head. But we'll take it over there and have a bit of a look. Bye for now. And here we have a look at it from this side of the Cincinnati number two tool and cutter grinder. Unlike the later series two when they joined with Millicron, this does not have the uh, swivel head. It gives you about, I think, 15 degrees in either direction. And also the motor is up on top of the power head. But yes, I think the bracket looks quite good. Um, I'll take you around the other side. You can have a look from there. It doesn't have any of the bolt holes lining up, but it's a very, very easy job to do. And quite a bit of adjustability there and I think I may be able to even leave the spindle housing on the end of the bracket without it getting too much in the way. Uh, yes and no. Either way I'm going to have either the motor or the uh, spindle housing hanging over it so I've got to decide which way to go. I may just let the motor hang over the back where the light stand comes up from and cut the front off. That'll give me better access to the housing. Anyway, we'll go around the other side and have another look. Now, this is looking at it from the other side. And yes, I think that the um, spindle housing from the front will have to be cut off that mount plate. It'll just get in the way of grinding on the machine. But at least with this setup, I'll be able to power the Cincinnati number no. 2 from up on top here. Uh, I'll have to have a look through all the accessories I have to see if I've got any um, arbor extensions so I can get the grinding wheel out closer over the top of the table but I can see why these are still quite so popular they're a pretty universal machine although they do have a very big footprint they take up quite a bit of your workshop real estate but now I think it'll be a real good goer and I think this would be a much better design than trying to rewind the motor and fully rewire all of the horrible electrics it's still 1940s edition most of it um, outside of the frame it's okay but inside is still all the original conjuted rubber and cotton wiring and that makes me shudder when you're talking about 415 volts okay we'll put a few things up on the table in a few minutes but uh, this is virtually the end of the first section bye for now please like and subscribe